Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be taking a look at creating a multiple slide slider revolution instance. We're going to take a look at how we can compress and get images into the right format so we can use transparency. We're also going to take a look at how we can put this into the page and how some of the settings affect the way that is actually viewed. So let's take a look at how we do all this with slider revolution. So as you can see, I'm already in the admin of WordPress and I'm in slider revolution. So the first thing we need to do is create a new slider. So we'll just hit new slider and that'll take us through to the options that allow us to specify a whole host of different configuration settings. Now don't worry, this does look kind of overwhelming if you're new to this, but we don't need to set that many settings to get everything up and running. You can obviously come back in at any point and tweak and adjust these to fine tune. And we will take a look at doing things like that throughout this video. So the first thing we've got is we can specify where our content actually comes from. And you can see we've got a whole host of options in this latest version. We can use post based slider, specific posts, Flickr stream, Instagram, and so on. We can go through and we can give it a name. We can specify the type of slider it is, some of the configuration settings, and we can even get in and fine tune that information based upon the device it's going to be viewed on. Now for this example, we're not going to go into a huge amounts of detail about why I'm choosing all these different settings, and we're not going to take too much notice of things like adjusting for the notebook and the tablet and mobile, because a lot of this can be automated. So I wouldn't worry too much about that, but you have that granular effect. So you can come in and tweak these to make sure that your sliders look exactly the way you want them to on all the different devices they'll be viewed on. So let's go through and choose some of the basic settings. We're going to use a default slider because we're going to specify the actual images ourselves. We're not going to use one of these other sources. We're going to give it a name and we're going to call this one home page. We'll give it an alias so we can reference it if we need to. And there's our short code should we want to put that into the page automatically. We've also got the type of slider. We can choose a standard slider, a hero scene slider, or a carousel slider. And then we can choose some of the preset settings from below. Well, we're going to use a standard slider because we're just going to use a couple of slides on there. We're going to animate some various different things over the top of it. We're going to come down and we're going to say we'll have slideshow auto. So that will automatically figure out how things are going to look on there. Auto is already set for us, and you see if we sort of switch through and change different ones. If you take a look at these little previews below, you'll see how changing any of these slide layouts will affect the actual viewing area. So if we do full width, you can see it'll override the sort of template design and give it full width right outside the mark, the sort of outside edges of your, your page layout. Or full screen will do as exactly as the name suggests, which is fill screen. So it'll be horizontal and vertical. You'll see the entire slider covering that full area. Well, we want auto. You can see we can choose the layer grid size and I'm using a specific size. So for this example, I'm going to set mine to 1038 by 350 pixels. Now what this does is it gives us the ability to make sure that we've got a preview inside the actual slide editor. So we'll know where our safe areas are. We'll know when we put things in there, how they'll be viewed. If we sort of leave that to the default size, then you tend to find that unless you put your images in at that size, it gets a bit complicated and a bit awkward. So it's worthwhile doing that, find out the, the sort of size that you're working with, uh, if it's relevant, and then specifying those inside the layer grid size. You can see we've got a couple of other options which we're going to leave. We don't need to change anything there, and we'll see everything there looks good. Let's come up and take a look at some of the settings. There you can see we've got general settings. And if we expand that, we can specify we want to stop the slider on hover, various different things, and different defaults, how long the animation is going to take, if there's a progress bar, visible, layout and visual style, so we can say we don't want a shadow. If we do want a shadow, we can specify different types. So we leave all those as they are for now, and we can take a look at changing those later on should we need to. We'll just hit the save. That will create our slider for us, and we can then go in and start working with the actual slides themselves. So you can see it automatically brings us back to this initial page. Our new slide is created, or a new slider is created. We can now come in and we can start working on that. So we can click. And you can see that now opens it up, ready for us to start working on the first slide. Now we have a huge range of different options available to us, and we're going to take a look at some of the basic things we need on there to get a good looking slide up on screen and how we can start animating things on there. So 
We've only got one slide to start off with, and we're going to use that as the basis for all of our slides. So we're going to change the background image. We're going to give it a click, and we're going to specify we want a background image. So we we'll click on the change image. Now I've got a couple of images I've, I've uploaded, nothing special. I insert those, and you can see that puts the picture in there for us. Now you can see we've got these safe marker boundaries on the side, so that's kind of showing us exactly where our sort of slide will stop. We've got our animation timeline underneath it. So we're all set now to start working on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in something to animate over the top of this. And what I've done is I've created a laptop mockup and I'm going to switch over to Photoshop. We're going to save that out and I'm going to show you a little online resource that allows us to crunch down the size of 24 bit PNG so we can retain the transparency so they get considerably smaller than they are output from an application like Photoshop but it retains that transparency so we can allow the background to show through and they look great on screen. So we'll switch over to Photoshop and we'll take a look at how we can do that. Okay, so I'm in Photoshop and I've got the file that I'm working on open. You can see it's just a laptop with a screenshot on it, but it's got some drop shadows and it's got quite a few different things that you may well find that when you are doing your sliders that these are going to be relevant to you. So it's a good little tip. Now you don't need to use Photoshop. You can use any application that allows you to save up PNG 24-bit files or you can just obviously purchase them or download them online where they're available free. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna come into file and we're gonna choose export and save for web. I'm gonna choose the file format of PNG24 so we can retain that transparency. Make sure the transparency box is, box is checked. Make a note of the file size just in case I need to reference that for any reason. And just hit save. That's gonna come through and ask us where we're gonna save it. So I'm gonna just put that onto the desktop. I'll just call it laptop. Save that, and that's created our 24-bit PNG with all our transparencies. So the next thing I'm going to do is just close that down. I'm going to come back to my browser and open up a new tab, and I've got a little uh, website that I've got bookmarked, which is Tiny PNG or Tiny Ping. Click on that, and it does exactly as its name suggests. It allows you to compress PNG files a lot smaller than they originally are coming straight out of an application like Photoshop, and you tend to find this next to no loss of quality. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to find my PNG file. I'm going to check the file size on that. And just check in. You can see that that is currently around 50 kilobytes. So that's a bit big. So if I drag that over and drop it onto tiny PNG, that's come through and compressed that down by 69% down to 15.8K. So a considerable speed increase for anybody that's using a slower connection. And obviously it's great for your, your site's accessibility. So we'll download that. And we're going to use that as the basis for our slider. Okay, so I can close that down. I don't need that anymore. I'm going to come back into our admin and we're going to create a new layer to put that on. So all I need you to do is come over to the left hand side and you can see you've got this little flyout. It says add a new layer and what type of layer do you want to create? Well, we're going to create an image. Going to ask us to upload that file so all i'm going to do is find that file on my desktop and then i'm going to upload that and start using that so i'm just going to quickly drag that from my desktop drop it into my site give it an alt tag and say insert so that puts that onto the page for us now i can obviously just drag that around position it where i want and as you can see we can see all of the background. We've got the drop shadow underneath it. Everything is looking good and considerably smaller than the original file that I created. So there's our first piece of animated element. Now we haven't animated that yet. We've just put it onto the timeline. So we've got it there ready to start working. So the next thing we'll do is we'll just create a new layer and we'll say we want a text. And we'll just put this in. Doesn't really matter what we do with it. We'll position that by grabbing the drag handle in the top left hand corner. And we'll just change the style of that. So if we come up, we can change all the different things. We can change the color, we can change backgrounds and so on. So you can see we can expand this out. We can choose the different style. Let's find something that'll stand out quite nicely on that quite a busy background. So it's got a nice background block on it. Let's scroll down to some of the older effects. Oop. Let's just find something that looks good. I 
That'll do. Okay. Now we can tweak this further if you want to. We can actually adjust all the different settings we've got on that. So if we come through to background, see we've got color, we can also adjust the transparency of that. So we can say we'll put that as 0 0.8. Okay, so that's 0 0.8. And as you can see, if we move that over, you can see through. So we've got a transparent background. That's without other things underneath to sort of show through. Okay, we'll leave it at that for now. So there's our basic elements all added to the timeline. As you can see, we take a look at the timeline below. We've got all the different elements. We can click through and select the different ones we want to work with, or we can do that directly on screen and start editing the different parameters for that. So what we're going to do is we'll take a look at how we can animate some of these elements and the effect that it has. And then we'll create another slider with a different background and we'll just adjust that so we have different animation effects of it, even though we use the same elements. So let's see how we can do all that. Okay, so let's take a look at adding some animation to these different elements. First of all, let's start off with positioning the laptop sales and animating that. So we'll just select that. You can see it's now highlighted in the timeline and we can now start applying some animation effects to it. So if we come to the animation block, you can see we've got a range of different options already set up for us. And if we take our mouse over any of these and select different kinds of ones, you'll see that they'll actually show you what it'll look like, which is a great way of testing out these animations before you commit to doing anything. So. I'm just going to go something simple, like short from left. So it'll just come in from the left hand side. I don't do, I don't really mind where it is. And we select the laptop and we'll have that animate in. You can see we've got fade in, fade out. And we'll try short from bottom. So it'll animate it from the bottom of the screen like that. We can specify how it animates out and we can also adjust the timing should we need to. So you can see that when we come over the actual instance on the timeline, there's a whole range of different options that we can use for duration. You can see as we drag that over and adjust it, it shows us all the different options that have been adjusted, which we could then fine tune if we decide to. So we can do it either visually or we can do it numerically and actually get you know very fine level of control with it. But we'll say, well, I'm happy with that, and we'll just save that. It tells us to just wait a moment while it saves the, the different settings. And uh, we're pretty much good to go. Now, one thing that's worth taking note of when you're doing animation on things like this, if you're having multiple elements coming in onto the screen, you don't necessarily want to have them come in at the same time. So what I would recommend you do is things like where we have this animating in, we'd have that come in first, then the laptop afterwards or the other way around. So you kind of build up the different layers of animation. Obviously, this isn't something that's written in stone and it depends on what you were doing. But if you're doing a slider that's very similar to what I'm doing in this example, it just means that everything kind of comes together and it draws the attention because it kind of builds up the slide and then goes on, on to the next one afterwards. So we'll say we're happy with that. And uh, we'll just make sure that's saved. And that's our first slide all created, ready to go on to the next one. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to create another slide now that's going to be based upon this one. So we're going to use this as a sort of template. And we can do that easily with Slider Revolution. We can just simply come back up to any of the slides we have created. Once you take your mouse over there, you can see it opens up a couple of additional options. First one we want is Duplicate. So that'll create an exact copy of our slide, which we can then come in and we can edit that slide. So we just click and we're now editing that slide. So the first thing I want to do is just change the background. So change the image, choose an alternative image from our gallery. That updates the image. We can click and we can say, well, I want to change the text on this so I can come down, choose the text option and we can change that to something else. Oop. Spelling will be good. So everything else stays the same. So we have a continuity between them. The background is different, the text is different, but the, in this instance, the elements are the same, the animation is the same. So it's a quick way of 
duplicating and just adjusting the various different aspects of the next slide you want to change because generally you're going to find that your slides are kind of similar. So we'll hit save on that and that's the basics of our slider created. We've created two slides, we've put some different elements in there, we've animated those elements, we've saved them out and now we're ready to go and take a look at how these look like on the actual site itself. So we'll switch over to the front end of the site and see what we've created. Okay, let's just refresh our page. And there's our newly created slider. So you can see the elements animate in. We can jump through to the next slide or the previous slide. It pauses on hover. We've got this little bar at the top that shows us how long it is to the, to the next slide. We take our mouse over, that pauses it. We take our mouse out. That allows the animation to start back up. All of these settings are configurable from each of the slider settings. So you can change all these things. There's our next slide with our animation. So that's all pretty easy. Like I say, we can come back at any point and adjust any of those different things. So we might say we want to change the, the time that the, the laptop animates in. We might say, well, we want that to come in a little bit later so we can drag that over and start that further through the animation process. We can save that. We can jump back over, refresh this. And we've got the next slide and we should find there's a slightly longer pause before the laptop comes in. Sorry, I do apologize, before the laptop servicing tab comes in. All very easy. So you can see it's very configurable, very easy to change any settings. If you want to go through and actually adjust all the settings for any particular slider, we can come through and click on slider settings, go back to that, adjust the actual settings on there. So we can say, well, we want the general settings, for example, the progress bar, we don't want that. We might say, well, actually, let's just turn that off. So that gets rid of the progress bar. We can save that out. Go back over and refresh our page. And then we'll find that the progress bar at the top is now no longer being shown. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope it was taking you through and showing you how quick and easy it is to create animated multi-layer slides in Slider Revolution 5. It's showing you how, e how easy it is to come in and adjust any of the settings you previously created. Everything is configurable. You can see how easy it is to duplicate any of the slides you created and use those as a basis for your next slide and your next slide and so on. You can even save those as a template. So if you wanted to use these again and again and again without having to go through and create it the first time, you could easily just set that up as a template and then use that on any of your future slides. I hope you found the video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the latest videos we're adding to this channel. If you've liked the video, please hit the thumbs up below. It really does help. If you've got any comments or feedback or suggestions on any future tutorials, please post those in the comment section below and we'll read everything you put on there. And if we can, we'll create videos that you are looking for. We'll answer all the questions you may have. But until next time, take care.